Welcome to The Alley Effect with Allison Blythe, authentically living life your way. We all contemplate making changes in our lives that would allow us to live more authentically, but it can be hard to take action. Allison is here to educate, equip, and empower you with the tools you need to start authentically living life your way. Get ready to eradicate your limitations and destructive patterns as you take full responsibility for your own happiness. This show is not just talk. It is conversation for profound self-awareness, acceptance, and appreciation, the key elements to stepping into the power as the creator of your very best life. The Alley Effect with Allison Blythe starts now. Hey, everyone, you're listening to The Alley Effect, authentically living life your way with me, Allison Blythe, certified life coach and licensed clinical social worker. You can join me the first and third Thursday of every single month right here on Transformation Talk Radio as we dig deep into this concept of authenticity, covering different topics to support you in authentically living life your way. Because it seems so simple, just be yourself. And yet we all know, especially in today's day and age, it's a lot harder than it actually seems. Maybe you've been given that advice. Maybe you've given that advice to other people. Just be yourself, but stay with me for the next hour as we dive into a topic, cover yet a different issue to actually offer tools, tips, and techniques, resources to help educate, equip, and empower you in authentically living life your way. These, this is where you can come to transform through practical tools and actual real talk. The last time we were together, we covered a topic um, I shared about an incident of road rage that I experienced, a real intense thing that kind of stuck with me for several weeks and just something that came so far out of the blue and caught me really far off guard. And it just kind of riddled me a little bit. And yet at the same time, uh, as much as I started to think about it, I really challenged myself like, okay, what am I supposed to learn from an experience like this? And I thought about how is it in the world that we've come to a place where we react and respond to each other with such hostility and defense. I offered myself and you folks a challenge to develop a practice, a very deliberate, intentional decision to offer more compassion and more empathy to other people. Then instead of just popping off all the time, reacting and being so hostile, to just take a minute to really take a breath, chill out for just a second and start to understand what is it that's going on in our world? Because as basic as empathy really is, I also realize it's becoming more and more of a rarity in our world. People are hostile, we're reactive and we're defensive with one another. Many people are just plain burned out. Maybe some of you have heard the term compassion fatigue and people are way, way, way stressed out all the time. There's a significant divide that's happening between us. We've seen so many people just becoming increasingly like peopley in the world, challenging to really relate and connect, to let that guard down. I think that's happening for a lot of reasons that we're not gonna necessarily venture into today, but I'm wondering, did you take the time to take that empathy challenge? I offered you an opportunity to really, as a community, gather together and start to practice and become more committed to showing up in the world with even just a little bit more consider considerate and tolerance for other people. How are you doing with that? I know there's been times when I've wanted to react kind of defensively. I've thought, no, who do I want to be in this world? I would love to hear if you've had any big wins where you've noticed that you've been able to introduce more compassion and empathy towards people, or if you've had some troubles, are you really struggling with that compassion fatigue, feeling equally burned out as some other people you might know? I want to support you in this work. So if there's something that you need help with or you want to share something with me, I would love to, have, to hear that because I do believe that nothing happens by accident. It's up to us, whatever we experience in the world, it's up to us to decide how we want to determine or experience maybe the lens through how we want to see and interpret things. 
So I've put a lot of thought into that experience and really tried to be very deliberate about my interactions with other people. I've had some wins and certainly some struggles too, because most people have the emotion of empathy. Someone gets hurt and you just kind of cringe at the, th at the thought or the sight of it. Somebody endures a really horrific tragedy, which unfortunately we've heard a lot of in our world lately. And you have some sadness and some, some sorrow for them. Maybe they're on your mind, you send a card, you show up a little bit more frequently. That's the feeling of empathy. Most people, unless we're talking about, I don't know, sociopath or psychopath level, most people have at least some emotion of empathy for other people. And the closer someone is to you, the more likely you're going to feel that emotion of empathy, or maybe the more relatable and experiences. Someone struggles with a child and you have children, and so you can kind of relate to that. Your level of empathy is going to increase also. Though it's becoming more and more rare for us to show that emotion to other people in the world, it certainly is something that I think people do still feel and we can be very deliberate about. But today, I want to talk to you about something a little bit different, something that goes much deeper and has more to do with maybe like more how someone is actually wired, how they experience the world and the people in the world. Last time, we talked about the emotion of empathy and the practice of that. But today, we're going to go deeper and address someone who is actually an empath. It's an incredibly important d distinguishment, kind of the idea to separate the two, the emotion of empathy versus the wiring of empathy. And today we're going to talk not just about the feeling, but we're actually going to talk about someone who is an empath. And for those of you who are one, your ears are likely perking up and you're kind of like, oh, wait a minute. Maybe your shoulders kind of go down with a sigh of relief. Like, oh, finally, I'm going to like, somebody's going to talk my language or I'm going to meet some of my people. Yes, that is my hope. Uh, that you will start to hear some information that you can relate to, to know that you are not alone. Others of you might be going like, well, wait a minute, the feeling of empathy, wiring is empathy. Stay tuned. You might learn a thing about yourself. You might learn something about someone that you love that you can really relate to differently. And though most people can understand that emotion of empathy, very few people are actually wired as an empath, someone who is built and designed to actually feel the experience and the emotion, the circumstances that another person is going through. What is it that makes empaths different? What are the qualities or the abilities that an empath has? And how do you differentiate those for others? That's some of what we're going to talk about today. What are the struggles that an empath have? And empaths can certainly have a lot of struggles, especially with all of the things that are happening in today's world. How can they start to manage and regulate their experience? If you know what I'm talking about being an empath, kind of how can you start to experience the world and regulate your experiences differently to really be able to improve your gifts rather than be plagued by them. And if you are an empath, you know exactly what I mean by that feeling of being plagued by the experiences of the world. It can be incredibly overwhelming and very consuming to interact in the world. If you're an empath experiencing and perhaps even absorbing, that's something that happens sometimes with empaths, they'll absorb the emotion and energy. It can be really intense and very depleting for people. Have you ever had a great day and you're excited to meet with a friend and the minute you do, the friend starts to kind of unleash all of their frustrations or their struggles and all of a sudden like you're feeling like tired and really drained, maybe even depressed as they kind of go on and on about their struggles. Have you ever walked into a place and you can kind of just sense that like something isn't right or maybe you've gone to the grocery store or the holiday party with people that you don't really know very well, but before long, they're like talking to you, unleashing and telling you about their problems and oversharing so that you know their whole life story. Mm. You, this might be some stuff that you can relate to as an empath. Do you end up saying yes to things? You feel excited about that. You want to go to this place or you want to attend this meeting. And then hours before you just feel a complete shift in your energy. You feel dread and panic. And then you're just ridiculing yourself for agreeing to ever go in the first place. Though most people have experiences like this occasionally, if you are an empath actually wired in this way, maybe you have these experiences quite frequently. <laughs> 
you feel flooded by things and just exacerbated by social interactions, even with people that you really like, your energy is fine. And then suddenly you feel drained. Things like news, loud places that you're going to, social media feeds, they might stick to you like glue and you might have a hard time kind of processing or shifting out of that type of energy. Maybe you feel things that you don't really know why you feel them or understand where they're coming from. Maybe you know stuff about people and you can sense certain things, but you don't know how or why you know them. You have, you feel more like it just, the world feels more intense and you have those experiences where you can just feel on such deep levels. Maybe you've been accused of just being way too much, way too, too dramatic and overly sensitive. Maybe you have a very, very tender, compassionate heart that you don't always know how to turn off or at least turn down. I wonder as I'm going through some of these situations or qualities for someone, is this something that you can relate to? The idea that you are you experience energy and emotions that are yours, that are of the situation, that are of other people. If any of this sounds familiar, stay tuned because it is likely that you might be an empath, which is much deeper and more intense experience than actually just feeling the emotion of empathy. So when we come back, I'm going to share more about this idea. What does it mean to be an empath? To help you understand more clearly what the difference is, how empaths experience the world and why it can be so intense and what you can do about it to change the intensity of your experience in the world. My hope is that this show will absolutely educate and equip and empower you in your empathic experience because authenticity is a critical component of being an empath. Most empaths cannot stand superficiality, right? It's like this surface level of conversation or relationship interaction, and they just can't stand that. So if you are an empath, knowing how to be more empowered by these skills and these abilities so that you can be authentic to have those deep substance conversations some with some realness and transparency. Authenticity can feel way too risky if you don't understand your wiring as an empath. I want to change that perspective for you today and offer you some tools, tips, and resources in order to really support you in that empathic wiring. I want to talk more about what it means and how we can get you on the front side of these gifts and skills. We need to take a break, but when we come back, we'll talk more about being an empath in today's world and move you from that plagued state that you might be able to relate to into a way more empowered state. So you are listening to The Alley Effect, authentically living life your way with me, Allison Blythe. We're going to take a quick break. And when we come back, we're going to talk more about being an empath in today's world. We're back on The Alley Effect, authentically living life your way with me, Allison Blythe, certified life coach and licensed clinical social worker. Today, we are addressing one more issue associated with authenticity. But before we continue and get too far down the road, I want to make sure you know how to be in contact with me. If something you're hearing is resonating today or you've got some questions, which I'm sure you will, you can always call me on my old-fashioned landline, 859-341-7773. If you want to send me an email or check out my website, allisonblythe.com, and email is allisonblythe at live.com. If you need a boost anytime throughout the day, throughout the week, please check out the social media stuff. I try to really lift up that community and, and offer some material even there where you can find me at Allison Blythe Life Coach. So today we're addressing a pretty unique, powerful community of people. This might not relate to everyone, but boy, if this does relate to you, I'm sure that something will start to ignite inside of you. This is a community of people who often go very unrecognized and pretty misunderstood. Today we're discussing, discussing a very special population of people who are wired as empaths. So some of you may know, or some of you may not know, that I actually offer a life coaching course called The Empowered Empath, and I'm in the process of writing the book. You know, it's been, this has kind of been a little while in the making of creating this material, because as I've gone through meeting with more and more people, I'm recognizing that we need to be educated, equipped, and empowered. And so I've been in 
this incredible process of offering this life coaching course, really working on getting the material together. And it's been simply a life-changing experience for me, for the ladies who have taken the course. And we've just traveled this road as a community of people gathering together to talk about like, oh, the life of an empath. I've really been living and breathing empathy for over a year, and it's been a powerful experience. So I'm excited to offer some of this today because I wish I could say that being an empath was just this simple, amazing experience that it was, you would just get to embrace the gifts of it. And we never feel the sharp edges of what it's like to be in this type of existence. But that's just absolutely not the truth. It can be really challenging to be wired this way in the world. I want to share with you about an experience that I had a while back. Um, I wish this was many years ago, but it wasn't. It was, I was invited to a, a luncheon and there were several people that I knew that were going to be there. It was a beautiful spring afternoon and it was a local event celebrating and honoring local women who were doing really good things in the community. As soon as I heard about it, I was incredibly excited to go. I wanted to be amongst this community of people. I, I signed up for the event immediately. And as I got there, as soon as I pulled into the parking lot, I was like, oh, I could feel it, right? The event, the venue was really large. There were a lot of cars in the parking lot. I walked through the doors and there was a lot of hustle and bustle, big, big, huge conference room with speakers and lighting. And oh my goodness, it, it was a lot. And so just even upon entering the doors, I was like, okay, I, I got to make my way. I got to make my way to my seat. And to find the right seat. And if you're an empath, you probably know what I mean by this. I need, I've got spe special qualifications. I need to have, see the room in a certain way. I got to have my back towards the door, towards the wall, not ever to the door. There's just certain things energetically about a room and being very conscious of what was happening. I could sense the buzz and the energy of everything that was going, going on. I walked past uh, some people who were being interviewed and cameras and bursts and flashes of professional photographers and people were scrambling and adjusting their outfits and fixing their hair for all of the selfies and loud laughter and greeting. I was way overstimulated. Again, almost as soon as I hit the door, I was like, ooh, buzz, you know, and I could hear the clang and the bang of the caterers. They were trying to set up the lunch. And before I knew it, I was just totally overloaded. I hadn't even found my seat yet. I hadn't even made it across the, the uh, floor. And so the air was kind of taken out of my sails. I was like, oh, doggone it. Like, I know this feeling. Um, and I just was kind of like, oh, this could be a very long afternoon. But I managed to find my seat and I put my stuff down and kind of got myself re-centered. And the very next big adult strategy was that I could possibly come up with was to walk my way all the way back across the room through all of that commotion and turmoil once again, so that I could just simply find some refuge. I tried to catch my breath and find my footing to get my wits back about me. And as I said, I, I, this is not years ago. I am not 12 years old. As a matter of fact, I've been 12 for a very long time. Even as a grown woman, I just found myself seeking solace and refuge in a place that I had found it many, many times before. A place I discovered decades previously. And the first time I actually recall finding refuge in this place was when I was in middle school. I needed to escape the energy of all of that. And so I smiled and put one foot in front of the other and made my way all the way to the bathroom stall. <laughs> That's the best strategy I could come up with, right? It's the only place I knew where I could kind of find my wits again. And I was just sat there for a second. I'm like, how is it that after all these years, I just am able to find refuge in the place I was able to find it when I was 12 years old, right? It's a hard reality to face, but as being an empath, it's a totally common experience to be inundated, to be inundated by people, by energy, noise, experiences that were happening, lighting, conversation, and environments at large. No one was doing anything wrong. It was just an average everyday experience that most people were thoroughly enjoying. And not that I wasn't, but it was a lot. There was a lot of intensity, chatter, commotion, all of that kind of stuff. And it was just more than I had anticipated. I was the one who had to like beat feet to find some refuge, even if it meant being in a bathroom stall, right? So again, as an empath, is that something that you can relate to, that you feel bombarded at times? 
that as much as you may enjoy people or experiences, there's just times when you also need to find refuge in places in order to kind of shake off the, the energy and get yourself grounded. Are you someone who can be overwhelmed and overloaded by the experiences of other people? Does your mood and your energy seem to shift for reasons that you don't even really understand or you sense and detect things that other people can't? What about crowds, noises, lighting, loud conversations, a lot of stimulation at the same time? Is it sometimes just too much for you, even if they're, you're surrounded by people that you really enjoy? Are you someone who can feel other people's energy? You can detect certain things that maybe you can even sense the energy of a place or even an object. Have people told you to toughen up, that you need to be, stop being so sensitive and really just complained about what it's like to interact with you because of the way you react to certain things? What, have you, are you someone who berates and belittles yourself with that dreaded empathic question? I hear this a lot. What the heck is wrong with me? Why can't I be like other people? That is something that empaths, when they don't know what it is and how it is that they're wired, that's something that empaths actually struggle with quite a bit. What's wrong with me? If you can relate to these experiences, I really do have some good news for you today. And it's absolutely no coincidence that you're here. Today, we are addressing the topic of being an empath. That's someone who really feels all of the feels of life. You feel every situation, every person, maybe objects, animals, environments. You recognize energy and emotion of people, places, and things. And that seriously can impact you. It can impact your perspective, your energy level, your outlook. Your cup can be totally full and positive. And then really what seems to be in a blink, in a blink of an eye, the bottom drops out and you feel empty, depleted and exhausted, maybe even overwhelmed. My friends, sadly, this is an experience of being a dysregulated or maybe like a disempowered empath. And if this, is a, if this isn't a common occurrence for you where you do struggle with that chronic sense of depletion or exhaustion, overwhelm, we need to talk because this is a show about educating, equipping, and empower you in, in authentically living life your way. So if you feel plagued by your experiences of this world, I definitely have an offering for you today. I wanna to offer information, clarity, support, tools, and certainly an entire community of like-minded people who can totally relate to what it's like being an empath in this world. Maybe you have some of your own strategies. Mine looked like the bathroom stall that day. Maybe you have some coping mechanisms that you've had that you're like, oh my gosh, is this, is this really how life is meant to be? There is a huge difference for people who are wired as an empath and how they experience and relate to the world. There's nothing wrong with you. It, once you identify and understand your gifts, your capabilities, and certainly your talents as an empath, you'll know more how to process and regulate yourself and how you can begin to relate to the world in a much more empowered way. You do not have to continue in this state. Maybe you have grown up thinking that something's wrong with you, being told, maybe you've even been told, like not only just thinking, but someone has said this, what is wrong with you? Maybe you've questioned your mental stability. It's not uncommon for empaths to feel riddled, depressed, anxious, their ability to relate and connect with others, feeling like they're just off in some ways. Maybe you have felt incompetent or incapable because of social interactions or emotional or energetic interactions with people. You, you have become depressed or anxious. Maybe you've struggled with your boundaries, that sense of self we've talked so much about, uh, knowing what's yours to manage and what isn't. Empaths often can't tell the difference. They will absorb and begin to feel contaminated saturated saturated and bombarded by things that maybe you just can't even understand this is a critical show for people who are identifying themselves as empaths especially if you haven't known that that's what it is there are all kinds of labels misjudge misconceptions judgments about maybe who you are and how you experience the world that's why the the book is titled misunderstood right i spent decades of my own life completely misunderstanding myself in the ways that i had learned to navigate the world without tools even as a therapist and a coach 
without boundaries, without clarity, without any sense of self. And so through my own process of being able to do a bunch of really hard decisions and relationships, I've created all of this stuff, again, educating, equipping, empowering, so that you can gain some clarity and acceptance about who you are and how to use these gifts differently. We do need each other to understand and support one another so that we can do this differently. So my goal is to empower as many people as I possibly can. So when we come back, we're going to talk even more about what it's like to be an empath in this world and how to get on the front side of those gifts. I am Allison Blythe, and you're listening to The Alley Effect, authentically living life your way. When we come back, we're going to talk more. So stay tuned. We'll be right back. We're back here on The Alley Effect, authentically living life your way. With me, Allison Blythe, certified life coach and licensed clinical social worker. This is a show about authenticity authentically living life your way, where I offer you tools, tips, and techniques to help you do just that, build authenticity into your day-to-day -day life. So today we're talking about the difference, uh, the feeling of empathy versus actually being wired as an empath. Two very distinct qualities, uh, each very beautiful and necessary in their own right in, in our world today. But it's important to know that there are very distinct uh, things between the two of them. I want to give you an example. Matt was a new client of mine, and I knew I needed to be very conscious of how I presented an idea to him. I wanted to introduce him to the topic uh, that can be very challenging to introduce, especially to men. We talked about the ways that he had been managing life and the struggles he was having. He liked people a lot but was often very confused and hurt by them. He got tangled up in, in experiences. He was impacted by the different tasks and engagements he had with people. And he could easily feel overwhelmed, exhausted, and didn't often understand what was going on, especially because he really did. Some of these were his family members, his longstanding friends. And so I wanted, I wanted to introduce the topic of him being an empath. And, I made that one mistake I know not to make, especially with men. As I was thinking about talking with him and, and using my words, I used the word sensitive. And I explained to Matt that empaths experience the world differently and are far more sensitive to emotion, energy, and interactions. And I saw it the moment that it happened using that word, sensitive just made him feel struck. It was as though I had slapped him when I used that word. He was in fact, incredibly sensitive. He felt a lot of stuff. He often had very big emotion to things and reactions that were very strong. And his family, his older brothers, his teammates, his college roommates never missed an opportunity to make fun of him for that sensitivity. He was ridiculed from the time he was young about the way that he experienced the world. Wuss was one of the nicest terms he was called by his community of people. And you can imagine some of the other things that he was called. And by the time he got to me, you know, that word, uh, the people in his world were not so kind about the way he experienced the world and how he related to other people. He was incredibly compassionate. He took things very seriously. He cared deeply about what was happening in the world with his friends in his community, the tests that he took, the games that his, he and his teammates won or lost and then his future. Like he just was a deep thinker and a deep feeler and his family and friends ridiculed him for that. So by the time he did land in my office, that word sensitive was absolutely not a good thing. I had to rewind and backpedal quite a bit to assure him that I was not insulting him or chastising him. I was not chiming in to his community and the echoing voices that in my world and certainly in my practice, words like sensitivity, consideration, compassion, caring, those were all very, very good, beautiful things. 
that sensitive had a much deeper, more purposeful meaning. And that's what I shared with him was the, the definition, which I almost always do try to get a working definition. But certainly in this situation, he needed to be grounded and kind of like shook off from, from some of the insult that he had perceived. So dictionary.com, sensitive, quick to detect or respond to slight changes, signals or influences. Okay, pretty neutral, right? Quick to detect. Here's a definition that I absolutely love. Same source, having or displaying a quick and delicate appreciation of others' feelings. Like think about that definition, having or detecting a quick and delicate appreciation of others' feelings. I don't know about you, but for, that's such a beautiful definition. It took him a moment because his reaction was so strong and his defenses were up so high that he needed to recognize the woundedness he had around how he was basically wired and his basic makeup in the world. Using the word sensitive took on a different meaning when he started to hear this definition. It was something that he could really relate to. Now, let me offer you a same source, right? But let me offer you a different perspective of, of how it's also defined. And this is the meaning that most of his family and friends had used. And so other definition, easily damaged, injured, or distressed by slight changes. A second one, easily offended or upset, right? Like you can see that it suddenly takes on a not so nice turn when you look at those other two definitions. Those were more the associations his family had made with the word sensitive. Interesting that in our world that we would find the negative of that definition, right? That somehow sensitive would take a turn for that, especially for males, that someone would be so rewarded and recognized in our world for wealth and intelligence, but oh, hold on a minute, emotion? No way, like that's a bad thing. You know, it's like consider, consideration and the care that we have for people, we, we somehow judge or chastise that, we make fun of people for that. It's ridiculous. And Matt had been deeply shaped and influenced by the people's interpretation and reaction to him. Matt was clearly an empath. I could feel it almost as soon as he sat down in my office. But he and his family and his friends believed him to be weak, a wuss, and again, so much more. It took on a real negative spin for him. So what's your experience? If, you have someone who, or if you're someone who can relate to that thing of like being sensitive and attuned to things in the world, do you take on the first category of definitions? Do you start to resonate like yeah, like I can connect and relate to other people. Or have you maybe been more deeply affected by the other definitions where you've seen it as a negative thing? It's likely that you or maybe someone you know who is wired similarly, similarly has kind of struggled with understanding their sensitivities. Are you seeing some of your own experiences and trying to relate to other people and misunderstanding what it is that you're experiencing? Have you been told that your sensitivity and the way you experience life is somehow wrong or weak? Again, something's wrong with you. Have you been confused about who you are and why this is happening to you? Uh, as we've gone about life, just had a, adulting type experiences, when you make friends, you get a job, maybe you create a family or some type of community of friends, coworkers, you go about your daily business of living, working, partnering with people, even going to the grocery store, or having basic interactions with people. Do you see any of these tendencies inside yourself? Do you struggle to engage and keep yourself contained and, and well enough to interact with people because empaths do absorb. They feel things that other people don't feel and they can sense and detect things that other people don't. And oftentimes empaths will know things. And I'm not talking about logic. No. Oh, I know that. I'm talking about gut, like this gut level of knowing, like, oh, this sense that they have. Oftentimes something will happen and I'll just be like, I, I, I just know it. I don't know how I know it, but I know it. It's a very common experience for empaths. Uh, this gut level of intuition, which is one of the most beautiful ways of knowing and experiencing the world. And yet 
if you don't know how to trust it and use it, it could be pretty overwhelming, uh, pretty confusing and complicated if you don't understand what that gut is trying to speak to you. Empaths have a deep way of relating and connecting to different things. It's part of uh, why I think some people get into the helping profession. They can connect to things like people, certainly sensing things from people, but also animals. Like I have a friend who is so deeply connected to, to animals and can uh, almost like an animal whisperer, things like nature or plants. If you've ever met someone, you know, maybe we tease, tree hugger, but someone who just feels the experience of the earth. And again, other empaths who can sense things in an environment like people or objects that you have an interaction with, they can sense the vibe or the energy off of people, places, and things. And empaths don't only sense or detect, they do take on as if it were their own. It is an incredible gift. It's, and I believe more of this is needed inside of our world. I think the idea of empaths being educated and knowing how to regulate their experience will absolutely change the way some of us are experiencing the world and doing some real powerful work and potential healing. But it's important to understand what it is. What is this wiring that's going on inside of you and knowing how to, to manage it, protect it and regulate it. Otherwise you can be incredibly riddled by it. It's important to know that everything is energy. Absolutely everything. You know, if I had a bunch of stuff, I'd hold it, you know, like everything is energy, every object, every interaction you have with someone, every conversation, the experiences you have, people, news, music, social media, walking into a store, Every single thing is energy. Have you ever met someone and instantly been just excited to know them or felt like you've known them forever? It's like this instant connection. Or maybe you've had the opposite. <laughs> you've seen someone across the room and you're like, I don't like them, right? Like that's energy, the, the connect to someone or the disconnect. That's all energy that you're perceiving. It's not visible, but it's very much there and present. Have you ever walked into a place and immediately just kind of felt uncomfortable? Like you just get this uh, yikes type feeling. Maybe you've been encouraged to do something and you just know, again, that gut level, everyone's kind of been encouraging you and wanting you to buy it or do it or date it or whatever. And you just know like, oh, this is not something I should be doing. You don't have facts or logic, but you just know. Have you ever felt really anxious and uncomfortable around someone and not had an identifiable reason why they haven't done anything? It's that vibe. It's energy. Empaths have those internal radars to know that certain things are okay or not okay. I believe everyone has this to some degree. We do have gut and intuition. Everyone does. But empaths can be very uh, flooded, both good and bad ways. And just like Matt, it's not uncommon for empaths to be ridiculed and criticized by their reactions to things. People may try to override your intuition and your sense of knowing. So just being really aware that that is a gift that you are responsible for managing. Empaths can feel crazy, unstable, and really confused. If you're inundated by the emotions and energy, you may feel very disempowered. So come back and we will talk more. We're going to leave with some, some tips before we end today, educating, equipping, and empowering you so that you can really claim some responsibility for these gifts. We need to take our final break. When we come back, we're going to continue the conversation. Stay tuned. We're back here on the Alley Effect, authentically living life your way. So today we're addressing being an empath in this world, certainly incredibly challenging for most, maybe confusing and pretty misunderstood about some things. It's my mission to change that. The world needs you and your full right as an empath. Maybe you're someone who took that empathy challenge. Maybe that's your skill level. You know you can be more empathic in how you're showing up. Maybe you're starting to recognize, wait a minute, this is more than a feeling to me. I do think I'm wired as that. I want to encourage you as much as I can so that you can step into that position of strength and empowerment as you recognize your giftedness and why your role is so incredibly critical in our world today. 
So the distinct differences that we talked about, empaths can actually feel the emotion experience of other people. You don't just relate or like, oh, that's really too bad. You can feel the sadness, the joy, the excitement, the pain of someone, the whole range of emotion. Energy is, you know, you can kind of dip or get really excited or rejuvenated by something. Your energy can shift pretty rapidly, sometimes for what seems to be no reason, nothing maybe obvious has happened, but you know that you've been suddenly impacted by something, your mood and your energy. As an empath, you might be able to identify like this strong sense, like you have a, your senses are very strong and your gut knowing is, is pretty uh, conscious and alert. You have a hypervigilance about things like sound, lighting, noises, tone, like you can sense like even nonverbals or, or tone of voice. Smells can be very profound and certainly how things feel. And just this spidey ability to, to detect and pick up on things that most people don't necessarily recognize. Now, for an empowered empath, which is really my goal for our community, these cues and signals all serve as important information, right? Those spidey senses detect and indicate that something is okay. It's like a green light for you to keep going and move forward. Or maybe it's a yellow light or a red light, like, wait a minute, something doesn't feel right. I, I detect something uncomfortable here. Maybe a person, a situation or a place is starting to feel like unsafe or unhealthy for you in some ways. It's using that information as kind of this guide in your decision-making and your willingness to say yes or say no to something. So a disempowered empath like Matt can be riddled with things like doubt, embarrassment, and confusion. This classic question, this big fat question mark of what is wrong with me? Empaths who have experiences and emotions, these sensitivities and sensations about stuff, it can feel so plaguing that you don't know really what to do with it. I want to give you some, some information and some tips before we end today. Really, the work of an empowered empath is to regulate themselves, to learn how to detect the difference between what is someone else's and what is what their own how to use information in order to make decisions and things, to see the magnitude of their gifts of who you are in the world and how you want to be able to function differently. And remember, sensitive, we're gonna talk about the positive, we're gonna to cling to that positive definition, quick to detect or respond to slight changes, signals, or influences, right? Like you kind of recognize that those sensitivities are cueing you into different pieces of information, having or displaying a quick and delicate appreciation for other people's feelings. See why we need more of this in our world? There is a lot to learn and a lot to know about being wired this way. When handled properly, how can you start to do that and know how amazing it is? I want to offer some basic tools for an empath. I started as I was kind of thinking about this. I'm like, oh, we've got some material we can really work on through this. Uh, but for just for today, for us to close, I want to offer you three things. Um, actually, let's back up. I want to, I want to do two things. Um, the first one is self-awareness. If you haven't listened to those SOS episodes, please, especially as an empath, go back and listen. There's a valuable resource in all of those. The two tools that I would recommend uh, from the SOS toolbox is self-awareness. And that is actually going to be one of the ABCs that I offer too. Be aware. What's going on inside of me? Where is this coming from? How am I feeling? What am I detecting or what's going on? Self-awareness is one of the most empowering tools you can possibly have because it keeps you in charge of your own experience. It's like keeping your eyes open and your hands on the wheel. The, the second one, self-anchoring, and again, if you don't know these tools specifically, go back to those episodes. Self-anchoring is your ability to shore in, that in, despite all of the things that are going on, maybe you get sucked into other people. Self-anchoring is the ability to stay very grounded, lean back into situations so that you're in charge of your own experience. SOS tools, self-anchoring and self-awareness. And then I started to play with like the ABCs, like what could be some creative ways for you to, to be more equipped in dealing with this empathic wiring. So I thought of three just to get you started. Um, the first one is awareness. So we've already talked about that, paying really close attention to what's happening and what's going on inside of you and outside of you. The second one is boundaries, awareness, and the second one being boundaries. 
um, knowing how to manage yourself, your own experience, your own emotions, taking care of your own needs and being very responsible for what you're agreeing to, what you're engaging in and what you're not, being very boundaried in the world. And again, if you need assistance with that, if you're kind of like, yeah, I don't even know how to set boundaries. I've got several episodes. I think there's a series of three about being able to, to increase and improve your boundary health. It is critical work for the empath. So the first one is awareness. The second one is boundaries. And the third one is commodities. The commodity, not just this, I'm not talking about the money management technique here. I'm talking about the commodities of time energy and effort. How is it that you're engaging with other people? Are you overextending, over-functioning with people, places, and things? Are you ignoring kind of the energy cues that you're being given? And how can you learn to do that? Now, it's good news also. I've got episodes on the commodities and helping you understand that if you're utilizing that self-awareness, those SOS tools that we've talked about, and you're managing your boundaries, you are going to preserve and spend your commodities much differently. Again, who you engage in, how often you engage, being very conscious of time, energy, and effort, and the way that they influence you as an empath critical, critical work for you to be able to do. So really kind of five things, two of them are fairly similar, self-anchoring and self-awareness, being really aware of those SOS tools. And then the ABCs to get you started. I think more work is to come with this. I can kind of feel the creativity. Uh, the first A being awareness, B boundaries, and really you being in charge solely of you and learning how to disconnect and, and detach from other people, separating your energy and your emotion from others. And then finally, commodities of time, energy, and effort. I've set you up well with those previous episodes as an empath or not, just someone who's wanting to really enhance their skills of being able to relate to others. You've got tons of information from those other episodes. So go back and review some of those because I think they could be really powerful in setting the foundation. The goal of this work, educating, equipping, and empowering people. And if you're an empath, you need this work. And my friends, this work needs you. If you have questions, and you certainly may after this uh, information that you might be kind of going, hold on a minute, reach out to me. I have an entire community and collection of resources for people so that you don't have to do this work alone. This is more than the emotion of empathy, though I want to support you in that skill too. We are drawing to a close today. And honestly, I feel like this conversation is actually just beginning. I promise you, next time we're going to continue the conversation. I actually have been talking to, to two guests, two people who are going to join us and talk about their experience of being an empath. So join me next time on The Alley Effect, Authentically Living Life Your Way. If you want to be in touch with me, send me an email, allisonblythe at live.com. I really want to thank you for joining me today. Hopefully you've learned a lot of stuff. You can join me the first and third Thursday of every single month right here on Transformation Talk Radio. Next time we'll continue this topic of authentically living life your way. Have a great week and I'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in to The Alley Effect with Allison Blythe. The moment you decide to take control of your own well-being, you start the journey of authenticity. Tune in next time for more empowering conversations and practical tools to help you shed your fear, worry, comparison, and less than beliefs. Stick with us as you step into the driver's seat and head off onto the road of success and happiness. Your best life awaits.